Well, good morning and welcome to the first day of the 2021 Chardonnay Harvest at Hafner Vineyard. Well, as the sun is coming up over Alexander Valley, we're getting a beautiful shot here of the machine harvester at work. So this is a 2015 Plank Harvester. And you can see one of my colleagues, Benito, there riding on the top of the machine. Here it is picking our Clone 15 Chardonnay. Walking behind the machine there is another of my colleagues, that's Gerardo. And he's just keeping an eye on things and making sure the machine's doing a good job picking cleanly and not breaking the vines. Hey, Hera. And here we can see the beauty of the sorting system at work. The grapes get separated from the vine and using a conveyor system, they're brought up to the top of the machine where they go through this sorting system, similar to the system that we use at the winery. And uh, here we can see, we look over the vineyard, there's the winery in the distance. A beautiful day of picking. Throughout my career, I've seen a number of different scenarios for harvesting grapes and getting them to the winery. And I have to say that our system here at Hafner, not only is it unique in my experience, but it allows us to get the crop off of the vine into one of these gondolas and to the winery in no more than 15 or 20 minutes. This allows us to preserve freshness, unlike any system I've seen before. Oftentimes grapes are picked, they go into one vessel or another, and they have to be trucked to the winery. Sometimes it can take hours before the fruit makes its way into a press. With our system, like I say, it's no more than 15 or 20 minutes, which is a real benefit to the freshness of the wine. While the machine is doing its job, the rest of the crew is busy harvesting in vines. The machine doesn't do a great job with the vines at the ends of the rows. Here's our supervisor, Sapanas. Good boy. In order to get the grapes picked in the same amount of time, we would probably need a crew of 40 or 50 people. And even still, the grapes wouldn't be processed as timely as what the machine harvester can deliver for us. Okay. Just like that, we finish up the first day of picking. That right back there is a full gondola. That's eight on the day. We were shooting for around 20 tons today. Came in a little light with the first four. Hopefully I made it up with the last one. <laughs> and just like that, the first day is over with. I'm gonna take these to the winery now. Okay, this is a load of Chardonnay grapes that we're just receiving. You can see uh, Ricardo is going to de-juice some of the... He's going to pull off some of the juice that's in the gondola there first before the grapes then go through the fruit sorter and then into the press. This is one of our two stainless steel gondolas that we pick grapes into. This one empties by tilting and shaking so the grapes are gently uh, shaken out of the gondola and into the food sorter. So we harvest our grapes by machine, and the machine tends to leave most of the stems on the vine and just pick the individual berries. But if any whole clusters come through, or we have to hand pick the end of the vines always, because the machine doesn't pick those. As the clusters go through the machine, the berries are separated from the stems. Everything drops onto this table of rollers. The stems bounce along the top and go into the, the screw here that's the waste screw. The berries fall through the rollers and then are pumped into the press.
the juice that comes out of the press is pretty cloudy, and we want to start fermentation of the Chardonnay with a relatively clear juice. So we'll settle the juice overnight in these uh, temperature controlled stainless steel tanks. The following day, we'll rack or pump the clear juice off of the sediment and then add yeast to get fermentation started. For our main Chardonnay, about half of that juice is fermented in the French tradition in barrels, out in our caves, and about half of it is fermented in the California tradition in stainless steel tanks, temperature controlled. So we're gonna head out into the caves and take a look at uh, some of the barrels that are out there and, and hear how we track the fermentation on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the fun things about my job is I get to check every fermentation the rate at which it's going and I get to taste every lot and make sure it's all tasting great. Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm checking the temperature. Um, I do it in centigrade. It's 19.5. I check the centigrade because if it's above 20 it, we add points. If it's below we subtract and that affects the fermentation. So now I'm testing the the bricks, which is the amount of sugar. Um, this hydrometer is for the end of fermentation. The first hydrometer is for the beginning. And I read through the meniscus, and I see that it's, let's see, 1.1. So it has probably another three or four days of fermentation. And I get to taste, which is always fun. And at the end of fermentation, there isn't the bright fruit. The beginning of fermentation, which is the best. I love it when it's just starting to ferment because it's bubbly and it has really lovely tropical fruit and mangoes and peaches. Now, because it's being fermented in a barrel, I get sort of a toasted nuts and um, Still a little melon quality. Cheers. Once fermentation is finished in both the barrels and the tanks, the wine just ages for the, the, the subsequent nine or ten months and then will be bottled the following July and August. And then it's held for about 14 months in the bottle before we release it to patrons and restaurants.